Hello and welcome to How Hard Can It Be? I'm Phil Murphy, that's a Nauticus 27 foot. There is the blue missile which has officially got a name called Starfire and this is an episode that's a continuation from the last one. We are dealing with the upper section of the roof together with the windshield and everything else that goes with it. And on the last episode I told you that I might have an idea on what to do with the upper section of the fiberglass and I think the lining the lining yes I think it's going to work so should we go outside and have a look at what we're going to be doing come on Okay, so we're outside again and this is the other half of what you probably would have seen in the last episode and basically what we're going to be doing is filling this. These are the old holes, existing holes that I've done. I've fiberglassed them all up and I'm going to primer it uh, in a grey primer which was similar to the uh, that we used on the boat itself. And then we're going to use a new method that I've come up with. If you want to flip me that can, thank you very much, John. Rust-Oleum. I go on about Rust-Oleum all day long. I've used it on the windows and various other things, etc. I really like that product. And they came up with something else. We were actually undecided what we were going to do with this, whether we were going to put fabric on it, uh, or do paint it or do something. We thought paint is going to look cheap and tacky and it's not going to look right. Fabric is going to be difficult to be able to mould it round. Vinyl, there again we thought it may be difficult to get moulded round here. You know, it's, it's something that we were undecided about. And then I came up, or should I say, I spotted this product and it's basically like a stone texture. So if I hold it up like that, I don't know whether it'll show the can lid. Does it show the can lid? It has a very coarse, bobbly texture, very much like stone, as it says on the can. And I thought that would look really good. So that is what I'm gonna try. If it fails, I'll sand it down, we go back to the other method, which would be to uh, upholster it. But I'm going to give it a whirl because I think it will solve me, solve two problems. One is time and another thing is upholstering it, getting it up and then having it looking good. Because obviously we've got to pin it to get it up onto the ceiling, etc. Uh, and it's difficult to cover it in material while it's in situ. So I think if we go down this method, it could work and I'm prepared to give it a go. So that is what I'm going to be doing. Besides the windshield, of course, that needs to be put on the boat and various other little trinkets that need to go on the roof. We've still got to do those. So all in all, it's a bit of a mishmash episode that hopefully what I've said, I complete. So let's get on with it. So there's just little bits of all sorts. So we're just going to sand that off with this. Just taking it off. It doesn't have to be smooth because this whole thing is uneven. You'll get the gist once I get the primer on and once I get this well, I think the stone chip is going to hide everything. Um, so bear with me. Right. 
we're going to slap some grey paint on. And when I mean slap some grey paint on, we, li we literally are going to slap some paint on. There's no professionalism, there is nothing. It is basically there to give what I'm going to do to it a decent key. So there's going to be no rolling and tipping. There's not going to be any checking to see this, that and the other. It's going to be slapped on. And you're going to witness that. A wallop it. A bit like a wall. So I'm just using anything. So all I want to do is put a bit of colour and a bit of a seal on it. And I think if I use this one, this roller, yeah, that's good. Slap a bit of paint on. You're probably thinking, He's making a big mistake. It's not going to look good. You could be right. But I've just got a gut feeling it's going to look good. One coat, and that's all we're going to do. Just to clean the surface up. I'm not going to do the underneath of it. Just the top. Might not even need that brush actually, John. Doing it. Yeah. Let's give it a good coat. Leave that there for now. Uh, the primer, I don't know whether you managed to zoom in on that. It's uh, international paint, which is what I've been using throughout the boat. Not the cheapest of primers, but it's a very good one. I think it's metal based because of the way this is metallic y. But I didn't think there was any point in buying any more primer because I'd got virtually a full can left and I thought well might as well use it up Really well. It does cover well. I mean, it's not the best colour in the world, but bear with me. Oh, it's not on, is it? It is. Is it? <laughs> bear with me.
Pants keep falling down. Be cool. I'll have to pour some more for that. Can never judge. Right, now. You can see it's all primer. And with a nanosecond, you're gonna see what it's gonna look like fully finished. So, two seconds. Voila. Granted, it is the other side, but look at it. That has had three coats of that stone effect you don't see any fiberglass you see a nice I'll just move that a nice rounded transition nice and smooth see around there it feel, I mean, it's still wet, so I can't really touch it, but it's, trust me, it's nice and coarse. It's flexible. It doesn't show any of the fiberglass mold effect. I mean, you can see the little holes, but they are gonna be reused because I've got nice uh, oak um, things to go around. But can you see where we could have had the trouble of going with the um, material? We've eliminated that already by using this product. So I think overall, that looks pretty good. Now with reference to colour, bear with me. I know what the cushions look like, you don't. So trust me, that with the cushions, with the light oak, it will all blend. There's a reason for me going for this colour, but I'm very pleased with the overall effect. Cost-wise, it's between seven and nine pounds a can, depending on where you go. 
I've used three cans on just this one half. So I worked out that if I was to do it in material, it would probably cost thick end of £120. I've worked out using cans, it would roughly work out about the same sort of money. But time-wise, well, you're looking at, and looks actually, in all fairness, I think it looks tremendous. So that is what I'm sticking with. Plus, when it all gets anchored up and it needs touching in around these little holes or wherever, if it, something needs touching up, I can spray it up. So, so if it gets a ding. Yeah, if it gets a ding. Bit of a touch up. So there we go. If you want my recommendations, I would recommend that. I think pleased it looks. I am pleased with myself, yeah. Because I thought if that went wrong, I'd have to sand it all down. Well, actually, do you know what? If it went wrong, so what? I could have done used material on it anyway. But I like that. I like the overall effect. Some of you may not like it. Some of you might. But I think overall, for what I need, I think that's great. I think it's a good washable surface. Right. On with the next job. Okay, so from the previous clip, you saw that we'd done three coats on the other one. Now I'm going to show you how to get to that particular finish. And I've started spraying the first light coat over this area here. Uh, and basically what you do is, or I've always done, is that I've put some hot water in a bucket and I've left this for about 15 minutes to build up the pressure within the can. Obviously do it in a safe environment because you never know you can get a can that can explode. So I've shook it well, the pressure's really good on it and now we're going to start the spraying. These areas here I've already put a coat on, well obviously that's been coated but you can see where I've gone, where the undulations are I've already pre-coated those, um, so about 16, 18 inches away. If you go any closer than that, you end up with a ripple effect, uh, which is the last thing you want. Uh, so just keep it from a distance and hopefully the camera will pick up how simple this job is. So. And that literally is it for the first coat. So we'll let that uh, tack off. It says on the can around 15 minutes. What we'll do is we'll stick it into the sun and we'll let that just um, tack off and then we'll go over with the second coat. And you'll see that in a nanosecond time. Right, that nanosecond is up and I'm gonna put the second coat on. So it's still quite soggy, but I'm going to spray another coat on and see uh, the difference in texture. I'll take it to about here. I think that's about how far this can will go. And then you'll see the difference between each coat. As I said to you before, that took three coats. So let's go on with the second one.
just about coming to the end so what I'll do is I'll just coat this and I'll just flick that there as well no I won't <laughs> but the beauty about pressurizing your can you get to use the whole can there's virtually nothing left in that can now normally if you leave it to the manufacturer's pressure sometimes not saying all the time you can end up with paint and no pressure. Of course, you can put it in hot water and just try and get some, but I find if you do it from the very beginning, you tend to use all of it. And there we go, can done. You can actually see how good that's covered, even with the second coat. That's pretty good, I'm quite happy about that. You can still see patches, but that's fine, that's cool. Because the final coat, once that goes on, you'll see a nice even coat. So I'll just get the other can that I've already pre-pressurized uh, and just finish this off. There we go for the second coat. Starting to take colour. Nice, fairly even shade, I think. You can still see where I've started and stopped in those banding areas. But trust me, that will disappear on the next coat. If it doesn't, you put another on. Right. Okay. So cleanse your mind because we're going to go a bit upside down now. So imagine this is the bow of the boat, the front like you and me, but well, like I want to call it, and the stern is at that end. So now that we've sprayed it, if John pans down, you will see, technically I'm standing upside down staring at the roof of the boat. And I'm in the little hatch area that's the central bit and as we go down this is the stern side of the boat so as you can see it all curves round but as you can see generally looking at it that's not a bad finish for what we've done you can see the little curves and whatnot now i'm sure with a heat gun and everything vinyl i could have probably uh, done it all and it might be when it's all up and it doesn't look right, I might have to do that. But at this stage, I'm happy with what I've got. And the reason why I'm happy with it is because I know what the next stage is because I've bought the fabric. And what I'm doing is I'm contrasting the textures. I used to be in the soft furnishing trade and I'm used to, <coughs> excuse me, I'm used to mixing up 
uh, various textures and I found a really really nice cloth that is going to be suitable for what I want to do with the next phase of doing this roof and this central section where you see the tarmac will all be covered in this fabric so you're getting a soft bit you're not getting an echoey it's not looking too plasticky above you're going to get a nice soft centralized gangway on the ceiling of course so that's that's that so that's going to be put away for a little bit because we've obviously got to do the windscreen and also we've got to put up the horn we've got to put up the lights at the center uh, up the top bit which is why we've had to do what we've done and that's this area here obviously above it you've got your light and you've got your horn and you've got all various other little trinkets that need to go on the ceiling so they this had to be done. That bit there doesn't necessarily have to be done as quick because there's not much on the uh, roof that's going to interfere with this section here. So that's finished for now. We're going to do that windscreen. See you in a minute. Okay, welcome aboard. We're on the roof and it's now time to sort out this windscreen. Not an easy task. I have left it and I've kept postponing it, but of course this build will never get on unless we get this actually sorted. So I've decided a dry fit would be the best way forward because the angles that it's got to actually fi finish at are pretty crucial because if I don't change the cover, uh, which goes over to protect the boat in winter and rain, etc., then this has to fit perfectly because obviously there are frameworks and everything and it, it has to be taut and it obviously has to um, eliminate water coming in and ingressing into it, etc. Anyway, there we go. So I've put these two, please ignore the masking tape on this side because these windows still have to be finished and painted up. Uh, but. I've got to dry fit everything to make sure that they line up with the original holes because I've split everything up, as you know, in previous episodes. So we're at the stage where we're trying to get these into some sort of uh, position whereby I can mark it all up, dis disassemble them again, uh, and just finish off painting because those two, uh, side sec those two side sections that you can see there just put that back on there these two side sections of course these haven't been finished these are made perspex they've still got um, the cover on them etc and they're still raw aluminium so these I've now got into a rough position like so and I'm going to mark them up because obviously the angle of this if I take that away it's bolted into the, uh, the roof at the moment with just those two and I don't want to stress them any more than necessary. So I've got to now obviously get this uh, aluminium angle into a position and, and obviously manipulate it to such a way where I can get roughly the idea of where this is going to finish up, which is about there because there's one hole that's there and one hole that's there that I've got to put a bracket to hold this into position. And then once obviously it's all bolted together, it will become nice and rigid. What I am thinking of doing in the center section is creating, I've noticed on uh, YouTube and uh, boats in the past of this, uh, uh, of this particular model, where people have obviously had these screens off at one time or another, and various people have put little triangles of uh, maybe hardwood as a support in the middle. And also I've noticed as well that quite a lot of the boats, and I don't know whether this was included when it was new, but they seem to have some form of um, mold, molded fiberglass strip goes underneath these windows uh, on a natural angle for these to fit. Obviously this came with nothing at all, so I'm working with what I've got. It seemed to be satisfactory as it was originally, with the exception of it did leak in a bit, but I, obviously now that I've stripped everything and everything's nice and clean, 
I can obviously make sure that that doesn't happen again. So it's one of those things where as an individual, uh, uh, and if you're doing the same as what I am with your windows on your boat, whether it's this model or whether it's any other model, the, I think the only way you can do it is to do it bit by bit. And I'm going to take these away, bolt them all up away from the boat. I know the angles will be right because I'll mark it everything up. And then as you know, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to finish everything off. Uh, but you'll see the balance of it, of course, in the next episode. So all it leaves for me to say is thank you very much for watching. Thank you for persevering. I know there's been a gap between one and another, but that's what life gives you. Um, and hopefully we'll be smooth running from here on in. Please like and subscribe and press the little uh, subscription button and the bell and give me a thumbs up if you like it. Thanks very much and I will see you again.